Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. Well, the journey continues today. This is March 25th, 2021 at roughly quarter to eight in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. So let's get on with life, shall we? Basically, it boils down to this. You decide what you're not content with in your own life. That is far easier than figuring out what you may be content with. You know, it's, I was talking to one young lad, and he told me flat out that I'd been telling him for years that you don't have to have your life organized by the time you're 20. Okay, we're, I know I was told when I was growing up, and most of the people I know were told, you have to have a plan in place by the time you're 20 in order to be successful. Well, two factors there. One, I've been doing consulting work, public consulting work, since, ni since 1973. I was 10 years old when I started. In 1986, 13 years later, I started doing it professionally as in generating an income. Since 1986, I've had, roughly speaking, about 80,000 clients under my belt. Okay, um, now, hopefully with this video, we get a thumbs up out of you. Please subscribe to our channel, and that way you can get the rest of the videos coming up. Okay, at the bottom of the, of the videos, you'll see a list of different things that I have written, taking the information I present here and putting it in concise form, all of which are available through me. You'll also find a whole list of, of ways of contacting me. Okay, so absolutely, if you have questions, drop us a line. We will do our best to get a hold to get back to you, or if there's enough people asking the same kind of question, we'll do a special video on it. Okay, but back to the original point. I was told growing up that... You have to have your life in order. You've got to have a plan in place by the time you're 20 if you desire to get ahead. Okay. Well, there's two things wrong with that. With over 80,000 clients under my belt, I discovered that the greater majority of people don't have their life in order. They don't even have a clue what they really want to do until they get into their late 40s, early 50s. Now, one lad, a young lad I was talking to told me flat out, I've been telling him that for years, and as he put it, he wished he had listened to me. He would not have gone down the path the road he did. Okay. I mean, it wasn't a bad road, but he wouldn't have gone down it. But like he said, everybody else he talked to said, you've got to pick a direction by the time you're 20. Okay. Bad idea. Enjoy your life. Follow karmic law. Do unto others, you know, be true to yourself. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. And energy out, energy in. You enjoy your life. Okay. It will come to you in time. Okay. I've seen I've seen kids diagnosed as being mentally retarded because they refuse to walk. Or because they refuse to talk. I remember one kid I was talking to, well, and I was talking to him, but his parents were really, really worried. Okay, because he had he would not talk. He was five years old and had not said a word. And his, you know, they took him to the doctor. And the doctor had said, look, he's mentally retarded. He may never talk. Well, I happened to be at a, at a house party of theirs. I've been taken over, invited over for a dinner party. So we're sitting there having dinner, and I grew up having myself what we and what these people put on the table. I grew up calling goulash. Basically, it boiled down to this: whatever leftovers were in the kitchen, in the fridge that were still good, ended up in a single frying pan. Okay, whatever meat was there, whatever vegetables were available, if there happened to be tomato sauce, for instance, it was left over. You know, spaghetti sauce, whatever. It was all thrown into one pot, and we called it goulash. Okay. It looks, in all fairness, it looked kind of similar to what a lot of people call shepherd's pie, if you put mashed potatoes over top of it, which periodically mom used to do. But in any event, 
this kid had never said a word. And this family was putting was was putting this on the table. Now, for me, it was just it was dinner. But the funniest thing, to, as far as we were concerned, happened because the kid in the plate, the plate of food was put in front of him, and this little five-year-old that had never said a word, he takes the plate and he pushes it across the table, and he goes, "What the heck is this garbage?" And everybody just stopped cold. Right. Now, rest assured, the word was not garbage, but the pain, everybody stopped cold, and the mother looks at, at the kid and goes, you speak. Well, of course I speak. But you've never said anything. What the heck is this garbage? But you've never said anything before. I never had anything to say. But what the heck is this garbage? Well, they finally got it sorted around it. It's like, you know, you speak. Well, yeah, we got past that. I want to know what this garbage is. So, of course, we got through it. The rest of the dinner went fine. But this was a case of the kid just plain didn't want to speak. He was five years old, had never said a word. He had figured out how to communicate his desires. Okay. And get the responses he he required. But he had been obviously diagnosed erroneously that he was mentally retarded. He wasn't. He was just very, very set in his ways. He knew what he wanted, and he had no point, and there was no need to, to vocalize it. Okay. There are staggering numbers of people that have been misdiagnosed with things. Now, I know the doctors are doing the best they can. The biggest mess that I ever had, and this was verified by Dad, and considering it happened on a military base, good luck finding proof of it. But I got diagnosed at five years old as being dead. I didn't agree with them, so I left the morgue. And clearly, I'm not dead. Or if I am, I'm the greatest figment of your imagination, the most horrifying one at the same time. But you don't have to have your life set by the time you're 20. Another obvious example, like like I said, you know, people are told this, but here's another one as far as I understand it. You know, Colonel Sanders, okay, was 65 when he opened it. He was retired and opened his own, his first chicken stand. At 65, he decided, I desire to make chicken. Well, more to the point, he decided that he didn't want to work for anybody else and he wasn't ready to retire. And the only thing he had going for him was his mom's chicken stand, a chicken recipe from what I understand. So he decided he was going to sell that. Opened up a little shop, hired a few people. They refused to do it exactly his way. So four months later, he shut it down. A month after that, he reopened it under a new name. And here he is. Now, I honestly don't know what the first chicken stand was called. But he started at 65. I'm a month and a half away from hitting 58. So I got a 70. I've got a seven year jump on things in my eyes. OK, now, as I've told people. Trying to explain how I think just ain't going to happen. You know, I can try it. And if, you know, with some people, I will take the time. But the reality is this, I know what I'm aiming at, I know the goals that I've got in mind now, and I am bound and determined to get there. Okay, it's going to take me a little while, it's going to take me some work, but you'll notice I'm getting things turned around. Okay, picked up a couple of new characters, so today we have to start painting. But. All in all, it works out very nicely as far as the overall picture goes. Okay. Because once you once you figure out, okay, I'm no longer content doing things my way. I'm no longer content explaining, especially to the people close to me, why I'm doing what I'm doing. The why is easy in all fairness. 
I'm eliminating everything I'm not content with. I am doing what I feel comfortable doing, what I can stand up and proudly say, this is what I did. This is the thing that I spent money on, or this is the thing that I gambled on, as it were. Okay. And I do not feel like trying to justify myself to anybody. I'm not doing anything illegal. Okay, and the same goes for you. I love the way that one person put it to me. You never have to explain yourself to anybody. Right. Assuming you're doing things legally. If you're, if you're breaking the law, yeah, there's a number of things you got to deal with. But, on the whole, you don't have to explain yourself. And here's why. Your friends don't require an explanation. Your enemies don't deserve one. And everybody else doesn't ask for one. So, you know, the reality of it is that all you have to do is make sure you're here, okay? The other thing I was told is when your head and your heart are in conflict, this usually comes in place where relationships are concerned. When your head and your heart are in conflict, follow your heart, but use your head to get there. Running off half-cocked is a bad idea. The one thing I did find that was absolutely remarkable is the number of people I've talked to that have turned around and said, I don't like my job. So they quit their job. And then they call me up and go, I'm having major financial difficulties. What, you know, how do I correct it? And it's not so much how to correct it at that point. Obviously get a job. But to those of you that are absolutely fed up with your jobs, okay, you absolutely do not like them anymore. If at all possible, stick with it until you find a new job. Okay, you're employed by somebody. This does not mean that you owe them your life. They may have given you a hand up. They may have given you a job at a time when you really required it. Okay, or they may have offered you a place to live at a time when you really required it. Okay, and more power to them. Okay, that's what you do, is you help people when they require it. But this does not mean you owe them everything off your back for the rest of your life. If you've opened a career, if you've opened a business, and you've reached a point where you're looking at the business going, it's, I'm just not into this anymore. Make sure you get something on the go on the side first. Whether that means go to work for somebody else temporarily, or whether it means start up another business while you're running your current one. The choice is yours. Do not cut your, your income until you've got a replacement. At that point, take the long-standing company, even if it's a family company that's been in your life in your family for generations. Okay, it's had a good run. If you're not have if you yourself are not happy with it and you're the one running it, then let it go. You cannot move forward into the future if you're still holding on to the past. To put that in practical terms, try walking without lifting the trailing leg off the ground. Okay, move your move your front foot forward, whether it's the right one or the left one. Pick it up, put it forward, leave the back one standing. Now try and move forward without picking the back leg up. Good luck with that. Now some of you can do the splits, most of you will probably get hurt. But you're still not going to move very far forward. Okay, so kind of along the same lines as go, of going across the monkey bars. You know, hang on to the first bar with both hands, and you go and you swing and you let go with one hand and grab the monkey bar. But the thing is, unless you let go with the trailing hand, unless you let go with the past, you're not going to be able to move forward. Okay, it's just a simple matter of reality. Now, do you have to know what you're heading into? Not at all. Because if you walk into an area and you're not content with it, you can always change that too. But it's time to start getting rid of the things that you're not happy with. Okay, time to eliminate the, the stuff in your life, the thought processes, the physical stuff, and what I call dead weight, dead weight relationships. If you've got a, a relationship where you're putting a lot of effort into and you're not and you're not getting anything effectively back in your heart, let the relationship go. It's one-sided, it's not doing you any good. Okay, and in all fairness, it's not really doing them any good either. 
because they're getting something with absolutely no effort. And frankly, if there's no effort being done, the reward of having it is not half as good. Like, I know people that really enjoy cooking. Now, everybody has to eat. Okay, at least if they want to survive. Okay, but if you're if you're actually a professional cook and you enjoy cooking, you enjoy seeing, feeling the extra flavors and what have you, then just ordering fast food doesn't work. Okay, or ordering restaurant-made food doesn't work well because you're not going to get that feeling and the same feeling as if you stand in the kitchen and put the effort in. Okay, so again... This is all individual issue, really. Take a look at what is going on with your life. What are you content with? Okay. They only When you get to that side, okay, what happens is you eliminate the things you're not happy with. And all you're left with is what you're happy with. Now, people keep telling me, or keep asking me, rather, how can I get my life to a place where I'm happy? Well, eliminate everything you're not happy with. They're easy to identify. Okay, I mean, I've tried it before, sad to say. Accidentally put my hand on a burner, okay, that was red hot. Actually, in all fairness, it wasn't red hot when I put my hand on it. But I put my hand on a burner, and it was leaning over top of the stove. But what I'd done was I turned on the wrong burner and leaned on it, and I'm reaching up going, what the heck is that smell? So I stopped and looked down, and my hand is in the middle of a red hot burner. I'm like, ow, click, and then I peeled my hand off the burner. Amazingly, I did not end up with a scar. Okay, but my healing rate is something bizarre. Okay, um, the thing is, you take the things that you're not content with and get them out of your life. All you're left with is what you're content with. Okay, the way you evolve into more happiness, as it were, is continue improving on the things that you're that you're that you've got that have little things that need tweaking. For instance, if you're riding a bicycle, okay, you can if if you're mechanically inclined, you can always upgrade the bicycle, change the gear ratio, change the braking system, change the pedal ratio. You know, the whole nine yards can be altered. In the long run, what you end up with is a motorcycle. So you start off with a bicycle that can go as fast as you can, single speed pedal pusher, and you keep changing, you keep upgrading until you get a rocket that does like 150 miles an hour down the road. And in all fairness, I don't even know if there's a motorcycle that'll do 150 miles down the road. But I do know at that speed, if you, if you drop off it, you're going to hurt. But you eliminate the things that are that you're not content with. And it brings us back to that neat little concept of how do you get success in your life? Four things. You have to have a purpose. Why do you desire your life to change? Is it for you or is it for somebody else? Now, if it's for you, then you'll be able to attain it quite easily, and you'll certainly find you'll certainly find the things that make you happy or provide you with the impetus to be happy. If you're doing it for somebody else, you're likely to find that somebody that you're not as content. And to be clear, I started doing these videos, I started doing them this this frequently at the request of other people. That is how I started doing them. And sometimes that's what it takes. Now I do the videos because I actually enjoy doing them. Okay, the day I stop enjoying doing them, you can bet I'll walk away. Or if there's a power failure, you'll probably find that I don't do a video that day. I don't know, something about no power? So we'll see how that works. But let's aim for the for the positive side. When you decide what 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 it is you're not looking at, when you make a decision, in order to attain success, you have to have a purpose. Why are you doing it? Answer the five W's. Who, what, where, when, and why. The how comes after those first five get answered. 
or usually get in the how usually comes along while you're answering it. So what you'll end up with is is five W's and an H, which I think is pronounced wa, but you know. You take you take that. You need your you have to have a purpose. Then you have to have a plan. Figure out the step by step way of getting rid of the things that you're not content with in order to attain that which you are content with. Now, once you've got the plan in place, understand it did not take you a minute and a half to get into the mess you're in. Your life has evolved for however long it is to now. It did not take, now you did that all haphazard and whatever. Okay. You know, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. If you're just picking random pieces up and trying to put them together, eventually you'll find the ones that click. But it's going to take you a very long time. Once you have a plan, it's going to take for it's going to take persistence to follow that plan, to stay on track with that plan. This is why I tell people write it down. Either put it on a pad of paper, which is what I do clearly, or put it on your computer, doesn't matter. Okay, same idea. Or for those of you that are blind. Use an auditory cue, and I don't know the systems in the auditory cues because, well, frankly, I've managed to avoid blindness. Okay. Now, once you've got the plan, you have to persistently work with it. Average time to break a habit or to form one is 21 days from my understanding. Three weeks of doing it regularly and you get into a routine. I know myself... Uh, at this point, because I'm now past the three-week mark, I, I said, yeah, I started, um, no, I'm not. I started on the 6th, today's the 25th, so I'm getting very close to the end of the three weeks, but I'm already at a point where if I don't get it done first thing in the morning, I feel like part of my day is missing. Okay, so three weeks to get into the routine is the average. You might be able to do it overnight. Then you have to have the patience to let things happen. I mean, think of making a cake. You put a whole pile of ingredients together. Okay. And now you've got the batter. Now, it takes time to turn that batter into a cake, no matter how much you'd like it to go like that. It's still going to take time. And that's where you carry on doing whatever you're working on. Let the, let the system run, work. Okay, if you've got questions, absolutely drop me a line at one of the at one of the points below the video here. Okay, and I'll be I'll be very happy to clarify it, and I'm going to go back over this again. The other thing before I run out of time here altogether is I have two signs that I keep readily visible to myself all the time, because one is on the wall over there, and it says I am worth it. The other one is up on the wall here, and it says, I have legally attained a minimum of $2,000 by March, by March 31st, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. PST. Now, that, that $2,000 is simply the amount of money it costs me to run this house. Okay, because I run both a house and a home-based business, with the way tax laws are that I've been told, I take I take 10% of that and I put it towards I take 10% of, of my of my um of that two thousand dollars, which means two hundred, and I use that as this is what my business has to generate for it to be paying its way. Well, amazingly enough, that means that I require my business to generate a minimum of $200 a month. Now, I'm no millionaire, okay? I'm starting to get in decent shape when I count it in pennies. But, you know, a buck is a buck no matter how old you are, no matter how much money you've got. One, one millionaire I talked to literally told me, he says, look, five bucks is still five bucks. I just have more of them than you. Okay. Now there's an old saying that goes, money cannot buy happiness. But 
it sure helps you look for it in a lot more places. So when you're looking at your life, decide what you're content with, decide what you're not content with. Far easier to decide what you're not happy with than what you may be happy with down the road. Okay. Get that in your head and set your goals on that. Okay. Now, I do keep these under the half hour mark for a lot of reasons. But with that in mind, again, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. That way you can get all the information coming out. Okay. And you can absolutely go back over the videos that have done. One series in particular that you really want to look at is a series that I titled Language. Check it out. There's various words that are very important there. Also, on the first Friday of every month on Spaced Out Radio on the internet, spacedoutradio.com, you can find us, you can, you can find that on Facebook, you can find it on Spreaker. Anyway, I am on there the first Friday of every month from 9.30 p.m., from 9 o'clock p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Drop in, have a listen. We talk about UFOs, obviously the ET connection. We talk about alien races, alien alien technologies, and alien cultures. Drop in and have a listen. Anyway, until we meet again, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.